welcome Pastor Todd and Miss Candy. Oh, man, we are so excited that you guys are here with us again today. And it's been so much fun talking with you these past few Sundays. And I hope you've had a great week. And speaking of great things, it's time for God, God sightings. sightings. So do you have a God sighting this week, Miss Candy? I do, I do. Uh, this week, my youngest son, um, all of his fourth grade teachers, they made rounds and visited every single oh, cool. one of the fourth grade kids. They came up in a caravan. They were ringing cowbells and they dropped off a little gift package and just said hi to the kids and said that they missed them. And it was, it was wonderful to see. Jane yeah. was really embarrassed. That sounds really it was fun. Awesome. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. Well, I have a God sighting too. Okay. Um, and a lot of you maybe have heard about this, but they're starting to open up some of the restaurants and places that we can go. And maybe we have to eat outside, but at least we can maybe go out to eat and we're going to be coming back to church. Yay. So exciting. May 31st will be our first Sunday back in church. I'm so pumped and I just praise God for that. Yeah. So, uh, so that is just a really cool thing. So maybe now uh, they can talk about their God sayings. Yeah. So these are both examples of how God is working in our lives. So pause the video and share with your family all the ways that God is working around you and in your lives this week. So we've been talking a lot about Jesus' power and how he helps us in our lives. Well, today we're going to talk about how God equips us with something every day. Uh, maybe you've left your house recently with your parents to go out to the store, maybe to pick up food. Uh, have you seen a lot of people wearing masks? A lot of people are wearing masks at stores, work, or to visit the doctor. Have you worn a mask as you've gone out? I've got my mask, Todd. No, Miss Candy, not a Halloween mask. Well, why not? You're dressed as a doctor. Why can't I be Darth Vader? We're not wearing these as costumes. We're wearing these to protect other people from spreading germs to each other. Okay. Well, that explains why people were laughing at me at the grocery store. Yeah, probably. So, just like masks are something that people put on before they go out in public, God gives us special things for Christians to put on when they get ready for the day, too. Uh, what the Apostle Paul teaches us in a letter to the Ephesians to put on the full armor of God. Now, that's really cool because God is protecting us from spiritual enemies. Now, have you ever watched a movie or maybe read a book that had featured knights as the main character? I have. Yeah, they wear all kinds of armor to protect themselves from their enemies. So what do you think God's armor is protecting us from? I guess that would be sin. That's right. But I don't understand how armor would protect us from sinning. Well, I've got a really cool science experiment to show how our spiritual armor really works. Cool. So this container represents our world and the water inside the container represents sin. And now that sins around us all the time. So these two oranges represent us as people. So the first orange has no peel, completely unpeeled. The second orange has its armor, has its outer shell on it. So this is just like us when we have the armor of God. Mm -hmm. The first one doesn't have its peel, so no armor of God. So let's see what happens when we put it in the water. It fell right to the bottom. It sunk. Exactly. That's just like us. If we don't have the full armor of God with us, we're likely to sink. Sin is going to do us in. But this orange has its outer shell. It has its armor. So let's see what happens when we have our full armor of God. Wow, we didn't sink. That's pretty cool. God's word tells us that if we put on the full armor of God, we'll be protected. We'll be protected from sin, from Satan, and all the things that he tries to do to us. So we have to make sure that we put on the full armor of God every day. That's a pretty cool lesson, Todd. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. We are all in a battle against our enemy, Satan. Satan hates God, and he tries to get us to stop following God by trying to get us to sin. But since we love God, we have to fight our temptation to do wrong. God is our protector, and he will never let serious harm come to our lives. With Jesus, we can win against sin. So why don't you come say that with me, and everybody can say it along. All right. With Jesus, we, we can, can win, win against, against sin. sin. 
since we are on, uh, in a war against sin, God gives us all kinds of special armor to wear. This is called the armor of God. We can read about God's armor in Ephesians 6, 14. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies and tricks of the devil. For we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world, and against wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. Use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy in the time of evil, so that after the battle you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the sturdy belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In every battle you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by Satan. Put on the salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times and on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all Christians everywhere. So what was the first piece of armor that we read about? All right, that would come from 614. Stand your ground, putting on the sturdy belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. So that would be the belt of truth. Yes, exactly. So can you tell me what a Roman soldier's belt was for? I don't know, to, to hold up his pants? I mean, does that mean that God wants us to keep our spiritual pants on? Well, not exactly. Okay. Um, you see, when Paul uh, was writing this part of the Bible, everybody knew what a Roman soldier kind of looked like and what all the pieces of armor were for. Well, just like today, many of us would recognize a police officer's uniform or a Marine's uniform. So who else can you think of that wears protective equipment? We can use examples of armor that we recognize today to understand what Paul wants us to know about the spiritual armor God provides for us. Belts hold up our pants and they keep them from falling down. Well, that's right. But the belt of truth is more like a tool belt. And so what are tool belts used for? We use tool belts to store our tools when we're building something. A good builder keeps the most essential tools, the ones that he uses all the time, right in the belt where he can find them quickly and easily. I get it now. But the belt of truth isn't something we can actually go to the store and buy. God's armor is something that we have to put on every day by learning new things about God and changing our attitudes or how we feel and think about life and other people. Do you know that in the Bible, Satan is called the father of lies? Jesus tells us that everything Satan has ever said is a lie. And you can look that up in John chapter 8, verse 44. It makes sense that God would give us truth so that we can spot Satan when he tries to sneak into our life and to know exactly what to do to resist him. So when we put on the belt of truth, that means we take with us all the things that we've learned in God's word and we keep them close to us everywhere we go, like we wear a belt close to our bodies. So I like to think of the belt of truth as Batman's utility belt. Everything that he needs to fight the Joker and the Penguin is right on his belt. And everything that we ever need to fight evil in our lives is on the truth that God gives us in his word. Um, we wear that truth right around us, just like Batman wears his utility belt. So let's go ahead and close in prayer. And let's just ask God to help us to put on the belt of truth every day. So, dear Heavenly Father, again, we just love you so much that you would give us the belt of truth by giving us your word. We know that your word is truth and that if we equip ourselves with that and we hold it close to our, our, our person, our chest, right on our heart, that you'll be with us, you'll protect us, and you'll keep us safe from all the evil that's out there. And so, Father, thank you so much for that. And we just pray that we'll be reminded that you're always with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, guys, it's time to close. It has been so much fun learning about the Belt of Truth with you today. Yep. And remember the exciting news. We'll be back here in church Sunday, May 31st. Yay. But until then, we'll see you at Drive-In Church. Bye, guys. Bye.